don't have a problem with coveting. <laughs> Unless it drives you to do something to All harm right. another person. Okay. I think right. I think that's a normal thing. We we do it as children. We well, see a course. pretty toy and now, we want since, that toy. Since you mentioned being children. And if our morality is something that's learned and handed down through the ages from civilization to civilization, how do we learn it? Where did I mean we don't they, we, there's not a book that that that, uh, that we, our parents sit us down and say now this is what civilization has taught us. We don't have a book. How do we learn to be moral? Okay, and that's why I like the title secular humanism. You know, secular is removed, has religion moved from it, and humanism means, well, we do have values, and I mean, there are, we value human beings above anything. Exactly. And, um, you know, on the previous episode with Christian humanism, uh, you know, the reason that the adjective Christian is added to humanism is they don't see themselves as strictly human beings because they believe in the spirit. So, you know, and they value the spirit over anything else. All right. Well, I don't know any Christian humanists, but yeah. but I'm glad you brought up the, the humanism side of our organization, which is secular humanism. Secular meaning we don't have a, a supernatural being in our belief. Humanism being the important thing to every one of us is ourselves and other people. Mm -hmm. That's what's important. Yeah. And, and, uh, and if we want other people to, uh, to treat us correctly, we have to give them the same kind of consideration. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that we, that we don't, uh, that we're entitled to break any laws or that we uh, want to forgive people who, um, who uh, act against us. But it means that we should take into account human beings as being the most we have. It's all we've got. We don't have anything superhuman. Charlie? But one thing that I think has come out uh, in the scientific uh, area is that they have tested primates, um, chimps, and they have determined that there are conceptual understandings of fairness even at their level of interaction. And that probably means that some part of our evolution from yes. uh, to, to human beings is that there are principles or something within our awareness of what is fair and, and how you treat someone uh, a ch as a child yeah. learning when you do something that upsets the other child you take something away from them your mother or someone explains you don't take a toy you ask or you you uh, wait your turn very basic principles and if they're finding that out at the scientific level that chimps are affected that way yeah. as well then there is something that may be innate to our being that is about fairness and, and kindness and the, and the young learn from the behavior of, of the adults of the adults right it, with humans as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We learn not so much from having been taught a lesson. We learn by the example set by whomever right. we're looking right. at our to, to get our to get our our examples from. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm wondering now, since you know, as far as we're concerned, we're very uh, we are we're good people, and uh, despite the fact that a lot of the religious people think that to be a non-believer, and especially if you call yourself an atheist, you have no rules, anything goes, because you're not going to be punished in hell. Uh, but now, I, I have a, 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 something that I f frequently read about, and they say, if you do a good act because you are afraid that to not do it, you may wind up being punished in hell. Or if you do the good act because you reasonably know that it's the right thing to do, which is better, to do it because you're afraid of eternal punishment or because you have come to recognize that it was the best thing to do? Personally, I like your example of the ethic of reciprocity, Okay. Um, where you're for the passive form as opposed to the... Uh, 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 aggressive form yes. given to others. And I don't think it's as important to do good, you know, because the definition of good can vary as opposed to not to not do bad. 
Well, of course, the the the, the doctors their their uh, principle is first do no harm. Right, and that's primary. Okay, mm-hmm. and and that can go beyond beyond the doctors. That for all of us, it could say first do no harm. But now, what about you know one of the one of the uh, of the commandments is thou shalt not kill. What about war? It's perfectly moral if you're being attacked to defend yourself because mm-hmm. everyone should value themselves. And I know this sounds sort of shallow. Well, survival is yeah. the first prime primary. Yeah. And and the thing about you know the the primates and, and how we evolved into having these ethics, I think it's 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 demonstrated that. There are plenty of people without ethics, believers and non-believers. So that's not intrinsic within our within ourself. It's something that's learned. And uh, the family is primary. Mm-hmm. Who do you consider your family? And that's why I think the humanists view all of humanity as our family. Mm-hmm. The theists and polytheists and reincarnationists, well, maybe not them, they, they see that there's specific sect as their family. I'm a Catholic. I'm a Protestant. I'm a, I'm a Sunni. I'm a Shiite. And, and whenever you see only that group of humanity as your family, well, then who is your enemy? And that's mm-hmm. anybody that's, that's not, not in your family. Not yes. in your family. Well, when you mention that there are some bad people, yeah, uh, and people, and even though we're talking about morality and not uh, breaking the law, but uh, crime and, and law breaking uh, is part of this same topic, and uh, and most people who are convicted of a crime and go to jail have done some have have done something that was harmful to someone or in society or society itself and i and i love the statistics that say as a percentage of the population in this country the number of religious people in the prisons far exceeds the number of atheists which in my mind means two things the atheists were more moral, more ethical, or they were smarter and didn't get caught. <laughs> I only say that tongue in cheek. Well, listen. How about uh, and we're talking now that we we're all adults and we have all finally um, made it somewhat public that our our stance regarding religion. How 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 does that affect us either in our families? Our community, our work, our business, uh, are, we, uh, are we exposing ourselves to, uh, to some undesirable outcomes? Well, I was in, in, I own my own business in Metairie for 26 years, and before that I worked for a business for 11 years, and all those years I was an atheist and I had to keep it to myself. I couldn't let the, the general community at large uh, have any inkling of my beliefs because it would have affected my business. Mm-hmm. Just like if you're a, a, a politician running for office, if if you uh, were an atheist and you let that be known, you would have no chance of being elected. Yes. In fact, you know, uh, uh, Ronald Reagan Jr., was asked whether he had a political planned a political career, and he said, "I'm an atheist." He said that eliminates that possibility. Mm-hmm.